I may have your attention, we'll get the okay. March City Council meeting underway. I'd like to invite Will Jones, although he doesn't have his uniform on tonight, he is going to be going up for an Eagle Scout very shortly. So, Will, if you would lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance to our country's flag. Come on up. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Will. Clerk, then please conduct a roll call. I can find my book right here. I know. Heidi? Here. Clinker? Here. Meyer? Here. Reynolds? Here. Brown? Here. Allersmeyer? Here. Williamson? Here. Downey? Here. Mr. Campbell? Here. Thank you. Uh, you have received the minutes of the uh, council meeting on February the 4th. Are there any co corrections to those meetings, or to that meeting? There being none, Mr. Meyer. No for approval. And Mr. Clinker. Second. Thank you. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Pose the same sign. Thank you very much. Presentation and disposal of claims. There are none. Presentation of petition, petitions and communications. There are none. Reports of city offices. Clerk's Office, monthly January. Waterworks Department, monthly January. Fleet Maintenance Department, monthly January. Wastewater Department, monthly January. Police Department, monthly January. All of those are on file in the clerk's office during business hours, and they are there for your examination if you would like to see those. <coughs> what about the oh, I guess the, oh, yeah. I do. I do have the annual reports, too, for the Redevelopment Commission, the Fire Department, and the Parks Department. Okay, very good. Those are there as well. There are no ordinances for second reading. We have two ordinances which are similar alike because they are dealing with the same thing. And we will have the folks who are going to explain those ordinances to, to us and to the public. Uh, address those to get together, and uh, then we will have to vote on them separately, of course. Uh, and I have asked them to be very succinct in their presentation because they may run into rather difficult weather on the way home. Uh, I don't know if you will get paid by the hour. You can stick around if you'd like, but uh, if you on <laughs> <laughs> if you're on peace work, we're going to get you. <laughs> uh, having said that, and the, the folks from the media, I would like those folks to go out in the hall as well. And if they would like to interview you as soon as this is over, this portion of the meeting, as soon as it is over, you folks may are free to leave. Okay? Okay. Ordinance. Go ahead. 2013-04, an ordinance of the City of Lafayette, Indiana Common Council approving an amended and restated lease between the Lafayette Redevelopment Authority and the Lafayette Redevelopment Commission pledging the city share of the economic development income tax and related matters, Brady Lane Project. What is pleasure of the council? Mr. Clinker. Over here, ordinance 2013-04. And Mr. Brown. Second. Thank you. Discussion by members of the Common Council. Mayor. Well, based on Mr. Campbell's introduction, I will keep. I will reduce the number of remarks that I had prepared for these two uh, uh, presentations. So, in a succinct fashion, uh, both of these uh, ordinances in front of you represent the ongoing effort of the City of Lafayette to be responsible with our taxpayers' dollars, to always look for ways to be efficient, to reduce cost and an ongoing analysis that we continually do of our bonds, our outstanding bonds, to see if there are opportunities for refinancing which can lower our payments, save tax dollars, and increase our flexibility uh, for projects in the future. So these two, ordinances, or these two ordinances here reflect that ongoing effort. Uh, we would appreciate your support on that. 
Uh, one other quick comment, and like I said, I've reduced, I've reduced this down. I know it was discussed at caucus. I was not at caucus, uh, as neither was Mr. Reynolds or Mr. Clinker, but I've spoken with them. Uh, we will be asking the council to suspend the rules uh, so we can have two votes on this this evening. I would certainly appreciate uh, your support on that. I think you all know that in the 10 years that I've been here, I'm not sure we've done it more than once or twice under very unique circumstances. We believe this is unique and certainly uh, justified. It's easier because we're not actually spending money. We're suspending the rules, so hopefully we'll save more money uh, with uncertainty that might be created in the bond market as some of the uh, events that are taking place at the national level. Uh, our council and financial advisor has recommended to us that they believe the sooner we can sell these bonds, the greater opportunity that we have to get a more favorable interest rate. So uh, we certainly want to do that. We want to save as much money as possible, and we would appreciate your support in suspending those rules so we can take two votes tonight and get these proposals to the market. Uh, with that being said, uh, I will introduce Costas, and uh, you'd think with a name like Rosworski, I'd try his last name, but I'm not. Uh, he's with Craig DeVault. He'll give you a very succinct presentation <laughs> on the legal aspect of what we're doing. I wish my kids could pay attention like that when I say something. To them. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Council, my name is Costas Polakitis. I'm a, a partner uh, with Craig DeVault, uh, focusing on economic development and public finance. Uh, what was explained at county caucus, uh, I'm sorry, at, at council caucus as well as uh, at the Redevelopment Commission meeting that was held and also the Redevelopment Authority mission was held was a form of, of financing that refunds uh, essentially four sets of bonds. Uh, your Creasy Trees ordinance is related to the refunding of um, uh, 2003 and 2004 uh, lease federal revenue bonds of the Redevelopment Authority. And the other ordinance that you have in front of you is authorizing uh, the financing for 2005 and 2006 uh, Authority and Redevelopment Commission bonds. Uh, with the, with the, the benefit being is uh, obviously just refinancing to get a lower interest rate, which Jason from Mumball will be discussing, uh, discussing the benefits of that. Uh, you've gone through the statutory process. This is the last step in the municipal statutory process. There will be a number of notices. But um, that is um, why we're here before you, and that is what the, the two um, ordinances that you have in front of you uh, are about. The only distinction between the two, essentially, uh, is that Creasy Trees uh, involves the pledge of edit, whereas uh, primary pledge of uh, uh, the, the city's distributed share of edit, while the um, Brady Lane uh, bond refinancing involves um, TIF, uh, TIF funds. And that's just how the other bonds we're structured that are being refunded, and we're just kind of continuing and getting cost savings um, for the city um, uh, by doing it this way. If there's no questions, I'll pass the baton to, to Jason. Any questions of this gentleman? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. My name is Jason Simler, our principal with Ace Jumble and Associates, a financial advisor for the Regional Commission. And as, as Casa said, we're looking at uh, refunding four uh, different bonds. I believe there's two sets of reports that are in front of you. I'll just quickly highlight uh, those to kind of go over to some of the, the highlights uh, and some of the savings that we're looking at uh, generating uh, for you. Uh, the first one, if you look at it, has 2013A PC trees. If you look at that first, uh, as Costa said, we're looking at refunding four uh, different bond issues, two in the Creasy Trees area. Uh, the first one's lease rental bonds of 2005 uh, of $5 million, $5,080,000, go out to 2017. The second bond issue is um, par amount of $2,530,000, they go out to 2026. You can see those interest rates vary from 3% to um, over 6%. Uh, refinancing, just very quickly, just like the same thing that you would do with your house, your mortgage. You go to the bank and look at uh, refinancing it for a lower interest rate. That's the exact same thing that we're doing here. Um, with this refinancing, we're not extending out any longer than what the existing bonds are. So the same time frame, we're just getting a lower interest rate, um, so lower interest uh, that you're paying each year. Um, page four uh, looks at the summary of um, sources and uses. 
Uh, there's already some existing bond funds. Those will be applied towards the payment of the bonds. Um, we're looking at needing about $7.7 .7 million of bonds to take out both issues. So that leaves issuing a new bond issue of about $7,310,000. Uh, Page 5 looks at how that's going to be amortized, again, over the same structure as you're currently paying. Um, again, these bonds are payable from TIF, generated from the Creasy Trees TIF area. Um, we're showing here a 2% interest rate. Uh, we're hoping to achieve a little, something a little bit better than that for the Creasy Trees bonds. And that's why we're asking the council to suspend the rules uh, so we can get into the market. We're already talking to local banks. Um, they're getting information on the TIF area on the city. So we're already having these discussions, um, but they won't lock in more than 30 days. So that's why we're trying to get this done as quickly as possible, um, not knowing what's going to happen in the next 30 to 45 days. But based on this 2% uh, uh, interest rate, if you turn to page 6, it compares the old bonds, the old principal and interest that you're paying on the 2005 and 2006 bonds to the new bonds. And you can see on the far right, we're looking at saving about $100,000, $115,000 a year over the life of those bonds. And over the life of those bonds, it's about $1,450,000 that you'll be saving in interest. Um, over once again, the per year savings. The annual savings um, in interest that you'll be uh, generating is about $115,000 per year. So over the life of the bonds is 13 years, it's about $1,450,000. Present value of that, taking into consideration all issuance costs, time value of money, the money that you're putting in, uh, the net present value is about $650,000, or 8.5%, um, which is phenomenal, really. <coughs> As Costa said, uh, these bonds are payable from tax increment generated from the Creek and Trees area, um, but they also have a property tax backup on them. So the last schedule is very important because it shows the amount of tax increments that is being generated from the area compared to the debt service. So the likelihood of needing that property tax backup is very remote. It's really just for our marketing uh, to provide extra security to get that lowest rate possible uh, for you. Hey, so what is the, you're shooting for 2% interest. What is the present interest on these bonds, if that can be? The present interest, that's on page 2 and 3. The 2005 bonds have a current interest rate of 3.75% to 5%. Uh, the 2006 bonds have a current interest rate of 6%. So we're going from 6% down to 2%. Thank you. Any questions, gentlemen? Um, uh, I'll skip to the um, second report, um, 2013B, um, or Brady Lane project. Again, this uh, is assuming that we'll refinance two bond issues, uh, the 2003 Series B bonds. Uh, page two, you can see they go out to 2018. The current interest rate is 3.2 to 3.9%. Uh, the 2004 bonds on page 3, they go out to 2026. Uh, the current interest rate is 3.7 to 4.7 percent. Now what makes these bonds a little bit different than the, the first two we looked at is these bonds are currently payable from edit, um, edit that the city receives. The first issue does have a property tax backup. The second issue doesn't, but we're suggesting that you put a property tax backup on that as well, again, just to allow us to get the lowest interest rate possible. Again, the intent is not to need uh, to use that property tax to pay for it. Um, edit has paid for these bonds in the past, and we anticipate they continue to pay for it. But again, with that property tax backup, it just gives the banks, the underwriters, a little bit more security and will uh, offer you a lower interest rate. That's what we're proposing that you do here. And based on that marketability, um, trying to skip to page five, we're again assuming a 2% interest rate. And again, talking to the bank, that's about what we're talking about right now is 2% for these bonds. So again, on these bonds as well, uh, we're not extending the term by any means, uh, keeping the same structure, just reducing, reducing the amount of interest that you're paying per year. And that amount is on page 6. 
based on a 2% interest rate, uh, we reduce the amount of interest by about $75,000 per year. So reduce the amount of edit that you're currently paying on your bonds by $75,000, freeing, freeing that money for other projects uh, that the city can do. So over that 13-year period, you're going to save almost a million dollars in edit. Again, discounting that in today's dollars, that's almost $300,000 of present value savings, or 4.5%, um, which is still still very good. Typically, anything over 3% we think is efficient and worth doing. So I know I went over the schedules very quickly, but I'd be more than happy to answer any questions that you have. All right. I, I just want to clarify something that I heard you say, and I didn't catch this at caucus. This second, the, the, the second ordinance, the, the ones you just talked about, the edit, you're proposing a property tax backup on those. Those currently don't have a property tax backup. Is that right? The first, the um, 2003 Series B do, the 2004 do not. Okay. So the, under the new one, they'll both have property yeah. tax backups. Yeah. Um, and I thought, I, I don't think we have property tax backup on, on all of the bonds, outstanding bonds of the city, do we? Not all. Majority of them you do. Majority, majority, majority of them we do. do. Okay. All right. And that's not, it, if we've pledged property tax for the other bonds, that's not jeopardizing us for these financially, you don't think? No. Okay. No. Any other questions? Thank you. Any questions from members of the audience concerning these re reissuance of bonds? There being none, would the clerk then conduct a roll call vote on Ordinance 2013-4? Heidi? Aye. Blinker? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Reynolds? Aye. Brown? Aye. Aldersmeyer? Aye. Williamson? Aye. Downing? Aye. Ordinance passes 8 to 0. Mr. Meyer? Um, Mr. President, move to suspend the rules to allow a second reading of Ordinance 2013-04. Mr. Heidi? Second. Um, discussion. Well, I don't know if you can discuss. Um, yeah. Any prohibition on that? I think. Any no, discussion? No okay, then would the clerk conduct a roll call vote on suspension of the rules to consider Ordinance 2013 4? Heidi? Aye. Blinker? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Reynolds? Aye. Brown? Aye. Allersmeyer? Aye. Williamson? Aye. Downing? Aye. Suspension for hearing the ordinance passes. Mr. Meyer. Move for consideration Ordinance 2013-04 on second and final reading. Mr. Reynolds? I second. Any questions or discussion? Members of the audience? On the Ordinance 2013-4 on second and final reading. Heidi? Aye. Blinker? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Reynolds? Aye. Brown? Aye. Allersmeyer? Aye. Williamson? Aye. Downey? Aye. Ordinance passes 8-0. to zero. Thank you. The next ordinance for consideration. Ordinance 2013-05, an ordinance of the City of Lafayette, Indiana Common Council approving an amended and reinstated restated lease between the Lafayette Redevelopment Authority and the Redevelopment Commission Creasy Trees Project. What's the pleasure of the Council, Mrs. Williamson? I move for passage of Ordinance Number 2013-05 on first reading. Mr. Downey. Second. We have heard the gentleman explaining 2013-4, uh, same proposition, but the source of the funds is going to be different. Otherwise, it is the same. A savings to the city, I believe, of one, I wrote it down somewhere, $75,000 per year, is that correct? And again, about a million dollars. Any questions? Members of the audience wish to address this particular ordinance? Being none, would the clerk then conduct a roll call vote on Ordinance 2013-5? Heidi? Aye. Clinker? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Reynolds? Aye. Brown? Aye. Allersmeyer? Aye. Williamson? Aye. Downey? Aye. Ordinance passes 8 to 0. Thank you. Mr. Meyer? 
Campbell, I move to uh, suspend the rules for consideration of Ordinance 2013-05 on second and final reading. Mr. Clanker. Second. All those in favor of suspending the rules for the consideration of Ordinance 2013-5. Clerk. Hi. Heidi. Aye. Clanker. Aye. Meyer? Aye. Reynolds? Aye. Brown? Aye. Allersmeyer? Aye. Williamson? Aye. Downey? Aye. Suspension of rules passes to hear the ordinance for the second reading. Thank you. Mr. Meyer? Move for consideration of ordinance 2013-05 on second and final reading. Brown? Second. Any discussion concerning suspension of the rules? <coughs> there being none, would the clerk conduct a roll call vote on ordinance 2000? 13-5, second and final reading. Heidi? Aye. Slinker? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Reynolds? Aye. Brown? Aye. Allersmeyer? Aye. Williamson? Aye. Downing? Aye. Ordinance passes, second reading. Thank you very much. Good luck with the 2%. <laughs> <laughs> or lower. Or lower. Or lower. Yeah. lower. Or lower. <laughs> See, you've got the orders. So if you gentlemen would like to be excused and the folks from the media would like to step out in the hall, you may talk uh, and interview these folks, and we'll try to pass some other things while you're not here. <laughs> <laughs> Good government in secret. Okay. Uh, there are no other ordinances. Now, uh, two resolutions. <clears throat> Resolution 2013-04, a resolution approving interlocal cooperation agreement for the mutual aid box alarm system between the members of the Tipton County Firefighters Association. Good evening, Richard. Oh, wait a minute. Slow down. Get <laughs> <laughs> on the floor. The sink is over. <laughs> What's your pleasure, Mr. Downing? Um, to hear and approve uh, resolution 2013-05. Second. Oh, oh, four. Oh, four. Oh, four. Oh, oh, four. Oh, four. Oh, four. Thank you very much. Second on oh, four. Oh, four. <laughs> oh, four. Uh, questions or discussion by members of the Common Council? Go ahead, Chief. Richard Doyle, Fire Chief, Off 8 Fire Department. Uh, this, uh, this agreement is, uh, we've always had one, or we've had one for uh, quite a long time. The last one that we had signed was signed by Chief uh, Phil Barker, which was, I think, in the 92. So it's uh, been in existence for a long time. Uh, this does change our agreement a little bit. Uh, it speaks of a uh, mutual aid box alarm, and that's just the system that we respond into or uh, into the city by the uh, volunteer fire department or out uh, for us out into the county to assist uh, other fire departments. There's 15 uh, fire departments in the Tippecanoe County, and, and this uh, agreement talks about uh, how we uh, provide aid to each other. It's one fire department helping another fire department. It spells out that we will not um, charge each other for that assistance unless there's a third party um, that we can charge. It also spells out some um, some information about uh, that we have to have um, insurance and, and um, workman's comp on our firefighters when we go out. So we're covered, but the same thing for somebody that comes into the city, that it covers the people that come in and also the equipment if there's an injury or, or accident with any apparatus like that. And I would re uh, request your, your approval. You had mentioned that it had been a while since one had been signed. Is there a statute for the resolution? Does it just stand until modification uh, it, needs it's made? It's yearly unless it's, it just continues to, to roll over. That's why we've had one that's, that's that old. Okay, thank yep. you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Chief. This doesn't restrict you to the old uh, system where you could only provide equal equipment like the ladder truck only if another company, uh, a fire department had a ladder company? Uh, no, it doesn't. It's not specific like that. The, difference <laughs> the old today, one was. Yeah. yeah, the old one was, correct. Right. The uh, difference today is a lot of the, uh, or good thing, is a lot of the rural departments even have equipment that a lot of the departments have aerials out there. It right. used to be the only one in, in the area. We do have some specialized equipment that uh, we, we are the only ones in this county and even the district that has, has that. Um, and this... Uh, agreement talks about that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Audience concerning this safety feature for the city.
Would the clerk then conduct a roll call vote on Resolution 2013-4. Heidi? Aye. Flanker? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Reynolds? Aye. Brown? Aye. Always Meyer? Aye. Williamson? Aye. Downing? Aye. Resolution passes 8-0. to zero. Thank you. Uh, for anyone in the audience that's not familiar with these, uh, ordinances require two readings, while a resolution only requires one reading. Uh, so, suspension of the rules. <laughs> that's uh, Resolution 2013-5. A resolution approving interlocal cooperation agreement between the City of Lafayette and Greater Lafayette Public Transportation. Transportation Corporation. Williamson. I move for passage of Resolution 2013-05 on first and final reading. Salsmeyer. Second. Uh, any comments before we start from members of the council? Now, I believe that Mr. Chosnick has some sort of, and we uh, probably ought to deal with that as a. Uh, um, I, I think it really needs to just be reported for the minutes. Um, an interlocal agreement requires approval by both bodies of the uh, government. This is one where uh, Greater Lafayette Public Transportation Corporation is the conduit for certain funding that's going to allow us to do some significant work at the depot. Their board of directors met uh, and have approved their resolution. Uh, the only change was made actually in the agreement based on a, um, a federal, again, review of it. And if you look at page 22 of the agreement that's attached to the resolution, uh, the participation goal for disadvantaged business enterprises, uh, the original agreement had 1.46%, per which is in item uh, 24A. Uh, and the uh, new agreement, and which has been approved by Great Office Public Transportation's Board of Directors, has 2%. So that 1.46% was just changed to 2%. I merely need to reflect that in the minutes of this meeting because you're just approving the resolution. The actual agreement will be signed uh, by uh, the mayor. And that's it. Thank you, Mr. Chuck. Yes, ma'am. Good evening, Jenny Leshney, City Engineer. Um, before you is, is the resolution which allows us to enter into an interlocal agreement, as Mr. Sosnick described with uh, GLPTC. And the purpose of the agreement is to allow us to administer some new freedom funds that the City Bus is allowed to um, apply for those funds. Um, and then we will be administering those funds to install new ADA ramps at um, Freely Plaza in the depot. And these would be ramps on both sides of the railroad pedestrian bridge. So right, right now, the only way to get up there is through the elevators uh, from both sides of the pedestrian bridge over the railroad. And as you know, we chronically have issues with our elevators breaking down. And, and new Freedom Funds allow you to go above and beyond what the minimum requirements are for ADA. So this gives us a secondary uh, means to address the ADA issues at that if the elevators were down um, or um, in addition to the elevators if somebody wasn't comfortable in taking the elevators. On the, if you're coming from the west side before you come up to the steps on the right side of the bridge we're going to put a ramp in the embankment that switches back to get to the top of that platform before you cross the railroad bridge. Then once you cross the railroad bridge, also on, on your right behind Lafayette Savings Bank, we will provide that switchback ramp in the same manner so that you could get up, across, and then back down without having to use the stairs. Mm -hmm. So this is an application for the grant? This is a, this is approving. City Bus actually has to apply for the grant. Right. We're going to the, be the agency administering the funds. And this came about because we were doing a, a rehab project with some federal STP money for the Myers Bridge and for that pedestrian bridge. 
and we wanted a way to try to improve that ADA access, and this is another means of funding to be able to do that. They have to be the agency that applies for the funds, and we're going to be, through this interlocal agreement, we're going to be administering those federal funds as passed through. Do we have any idea how much the federal funds would, that this is eligible for, and then how much the whole project's going to cost? We don't have the full project cost yet. Um, we are applying for, I believe, 870000 up to 870000 There's 873000 available f toward the project. Uh, whether we get that full funding or not remains to be seen. And if we, if we get that, but that's not enough to pay for the rest of the project, where would the rest of the money come from? We would have to look to see how much we would need and, and whether we had the local match to do something like that. I mean, if not, it would have to wait until we were able to fund it. Would it come from us or city bus or from all us. the jurisdictions? From us. City. Okay. Sure. The whole the whole project is about the whole project with the ramps with the excluding the ramps with just the bridges is about two million dollars. Eighty percent of that is being covered by our federal STP money, and we're covering twenty percent of that cost. Um, new freedom money is one hundred percent federal. So um, right now there is no match. If they um, if we do get all of those funds, if we got partial of those funds, we would probably again have the match, and I would envision us maybe twenty percent. Again, if we don't get the full funding, we'll have to step back and reevaluate to see if we can do it. When is the work supposed to begin? What's the plan? Well, the plan is for um, September of this year, if we can. Uh, the issue when we take frontal money is all of the environmental requirements. Um, we need to do um, permitting on the river, and we need railroad, and we need historic, and we need archaeological, and all of those things that take some time. So if we can get through that project pretty cleanly, or that process pretty cleanly, I would say about September we'd be looking at the bridge work. And then how long does it last? Um, I don't know that we know that yet. I would envision, I, I read the full report, I would envision one construction season. Everything. Yeah, just both. from the beginning to the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I would just, say by, if we were the taste in the Fourth of July, if we were able yeah. to start in September, we would we would like to be done be, obviously before before the taste early early next summer or late spring. Any other questions? Thank you. Any questions by members of the audience concerning this uh, ADA proposal? Being none, with the clerk then conduct a roll call vote on resolution 2013 and somewhere in this minute. 05. 05. Thank you very much, Lewis. Heidi? Aye. Clinker? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Reynolds? Aye. Brown? Aye. Allersmeyer? Aye. Williamson? Aye. Downey? Aye. Resolution passes with the amendment in this contract. Thank you. Reports of standing committees. Reports of special committees. Boy, the mayor's just stomping at the bit there, isn't he? <laughs> Reports by the mayor. Do you mind if I create a different angle for give this? Oh, go right mind. ahead. Try not to uh, block you out there. I'm going to kind of do it from this angle uh, here this evening. Um, so I don't totally have my back to you, but I'm also speaking to uh, speaking to the audience. So. Um, we're here tonight. Um, it's something that I get to do not very often, and uh, because I take great pains before I make a decision like this uh, to, about what I'm going to do, and so I have only done it maybe 10 or 11 times in the last 10 years. But it's a great pleasure for me tonight, and uh, with a real sense of gratitude, to honor someone who has made a tremendous, uh, that I have a tremendous amount of respect for, admiration and uh, honored to call a friend and a colleague and approximately 14 years ago I started a journey and uh, this person started that journey with me and um, that journey began in the north end of Lafayette with me as a city councilman and several of us working together uh, to create the St. Lawrence McAllister neighborhood and through this individual's willingness to be involved, to take leadership roles, 
uh, we created that neighborhood that's made an immeasurable difference in the quality of life for the people in the north end of Lafayette. We were able to put in streets and sidewalks. We dealt with problem properties. We did picnics and parties. We did neighborhood cleanups. We became more neighborly. We worked on trees and we built relationships with city departments. And we even put flower baskets on light poles and made a tremendous difference. This lady was willing to give her time, her talents, her treasures, whatever needed to be done to help that neighborhood group be successful, to make that a better place to live, to lift people up and to find answers and solutions that helped the St. Lawrence McAllister neighborhood move forward. And later on, we even did a neighborhood garden, which I helped in a little bit, not very well, but I did. She's dependable, reliable, persistent. She's unbelievable. And I, I honestly believe without her, the St. Lawrence McAllister neighborhood and the neighborhood in general would not be where it is today. And so if Laura Bartram would please come up here, we have an award for you. I think you should. <laughs> you usually do. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Yeah. <laughs> Viva de Laura. That's as much French as I can handle. My grandma can help you. She's French Canadian. There you go. Parlez-vous. <laughs> Miscellaneous and new business. Reports of Councilman. Mr. Uh, <clears throat> Campbell, I'd like to make a comment. Uh, I'd like to compliment uh, uh, Jenny uh, Leshney, our city engineer. We had a uh, lights trying to put out there in Orchard Heights. We had 67 people at the meeting, and she did a great job of handling because a bunch of people don't want them, and a bunch of people do want the lights. And she did a very, very nice job. And the other thing, I would like to make a comment. <clears throat> we have a couple people on ordinance enforcement that really work hard at doing things. And uh, they never get a lot of good comments because they're enforcing an ordinance. And I'd like to uh, thank Julie Collins and Stanley Knight uh, for doing a great job they do in trying to enforce ordinances. Thank you, Mr. Downey. 
Uh, now it's time for public Wait. comment. I have a I have one too. I'm just going to say real quickly, it's a Red Cross Heroes time, so give generously if you're asked at the, by a Red Cross volunteer. Good. <laughs> Uh, public comment. We ask that you make your comments and limit them to three minutes <laughs> and that you be very positive in your comments. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Darn it. Lloyd huh? <laughs> Wells, 3717 Rawlings Drive. This is not a good week to do this, but nevertheless. Typically, I want to congratulate the people who handle our trash and garbage removal and so forth from the neighborhoods because they do an excellent job overall. However, for the last three months in our particular neighborhood, I don't know whether it's new people on the job or what it is, but we have to police the area after the garbage truck goes through. This week I had garbage from my, that was in my can, I had to pick up out of three different yards. And I'd just like for somebody to make the people that are aware, responsible for that aware that there is a shortfall in that area right now. But in general, they do a stellar job. Thank you. I think that Mr. Call is making note of that. and. Uh in defense of those folks, uh, we've had wind gusts 30 and 40 miles an hour. So I know it's too windy to play golf. So. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments? Thank you. Uh, this is concerning the Eastland Drive. Could you Here identify it? yourself? I'm please? Robert Kelly. And your address? Uh, 124 Eastland Drive. Thank you. Sorry. All right. <laughs> Never done this before. <laughs> Uh, I suppose you haven't either, right? <laughs> uh, this is concerning the T-Bird design services uh, coming through down in our subdivision about the water and sewage proposal right now going down the street. Uh, right now they're making a mess of every yard down through there. And um, a couple of things we have, we're interested in, nobody's talked to us at all about it, and we're kind of concerned about is being elderly retired down through that subdivision is the cost. Who's going to be afraid of the cost of this? Another thing is really the repairs to the yards if this stuff comes into provision, uh, is going to be done or not. And um, also the treatment, and not the treatment, but the drainage systems. We have none down through there right now. I don't know if they're taking this into evaluation or not. Uh, and our road is only 20 feet wide. So if they start construction, our cost is trash trucks coming down through that road, plus the traffic going down that road. Are we be able, going to be able to pass or not without going into other people's properties? So it's kind of a big concern to all of us out there. Um, and we were at like, uh, I think it's 47 houses on that street. It was proposed at the time there was supposed to be 171 in that subdivision uh, when it first was drawn up back in '56. So it only came up to being like 100. I mean, a 47 only actual built, but we still have concerns because nobody's talked to us, proposed to us. One well, thing we did was read it in the paper, um, and then we seen T-Bird out there and started working January, doing their whatever they do, surveying or whatever. But in the meantime, we're concerned about what they're doing to the yards. Those pictures I give him shows where they're driving up in people's yards with their trucks. You know, come spring, we've got to get out there and correct all these problems. So we're kind of concerned about that at this time. Other than that, that's all i got right now. If I may, I think you had a concern about the drainage pond in the back uh, filling up and uh, doing yeah, there's, something there's, with your septic tanks also, I think. Right. Well, there's been a lot of us out there having to pump out our tanks um, you know, on just on our side of the road. Uh, and that's and we're thinking it's due to the drainage pond coming off behind Marsh and that Sam's Club area because all the water comes down off that lot into that fill pond and then drains back into the back down and around to... I think it's uh, some kind of ditch, Elliot's ditch, I believe, and drains out of there. But the water 
uh, we're, like I said, we're filling up. We're, we didn't have to pump our tanks out very rarely. Now we're doing it once a year or every two years. You shouldn't have to pump a tank out but seven, every seven years. And we think that's part of the water problems coming into our yards, uh, coming in off of that. The pictures that I took today were some of the uh, 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 storm drains that are halfway <laughs> down the sewers, down through there, were put in years ago. They're filled up with water. They don't go nowhere. They sit there. They're filled. They're stopped up. Uh, so th these things need to be corrected before anything starts out there. Get that water out there. So it, when we do have the rain like we had last week, we don't have flooded roads. And that's what happened down through there. Because they're full of debris, trash, whatever. And I got close-up pictures that are like six inches from the top of the drains, the grates. And they shouldn't be that way. And I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, before you go, uh, I think we can all empathize with you from the standpoint of what you're going through. Uh, we, as a group, cannot do too much about that. But the gentleman that is sitting right there behind you and the young lady that is sitting in the back there, I think those are the folks that should address those particular problems. And I think that you, before you leave tonight, you want to make an appointment with those two folks and so that they can address your concerns because I think they're, uh, I, I can obviously see your reason for concern. Well, I, and we've been discussing that with Mr. Downing there, and he's trying to try to set up an appointment with the engineer and the mayor himself so that we can possibly get together with some of the homeowners and come in and talk about this. The mayor uh, said earlier that he would meet, happily meet with everybody and the city engineer and and whatever, whatever company's doing some of the surveying, and we'll meet with them individually and try to show them more and what they're trying to do to, for corrections and so forth. So I think we're headed that way. Good. Generally speaking, uh, one of the points you made of the tearing up of the yards and things like that, that they ensure that those yards would be put back in a condition they were before they started driving across them and things of that sort. But again, those are the two folks that you should address and go from there. Well, I've already talked to two of them. I've called the, the guy that owns the company. Uh -huh. And he, he just said, well, it, it is what it is. Well, again, <laughs> I, I think that those folks will have more of an impact on that particular company than you as an individual. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I think customer relations should be looked approved upon, but well, the mayor of, and the city engineer will address those. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. I, I guess I would just make one one more comment to follow up uh, this issue. Is it's in, in the past I recall when we have these contracts with these folks, is that they do go out to the neighborhoods and they hold like a neighborhood meeting or something and talk to the people before this work begins, and so. When we're letting these contracts with these companies, it should be maybe this is a, maybe this should be addressed to the Board of Works. But I hope that that's discussed with the Board of Works so that when these companies do go into the neighborhoods, they they make an effort, send a letter or something to inform the neighbors of these projects. It's surprising to hear this from Mr. Kelly. Then. Well, we're I mean I'll, I'll meet with Mr. Kelly. And get, we're we're just in the very very preliminary stages. We we don't have enough information. Some of the, the concerns that Mr. Kelly has is certainly what we're looking at. But we're in the very, very early stages of gathering all that information, doing the surveying, seeing where the pipes, the drainage, how the water's flowing. And so we're not anywhere near ready to construct anything. I mean, we're months, maybe a year, maybe longer away from any actual construction. So this would be like when we start the surveying that we're doing out on Sagamore Parkway right now where we're getting the initial information gathered. And once we do that, as you said, we have never failed in 10 years to have a neighborhood meeting. Once we have the information, we have it figured out what it would be, like you said, the width of the road, how would we try to do that, we will certainly have a neighborhood uh, meeting at that time. But I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have a ton to tell them right now until we get some of those that more information and then we'll certainly do that. We'll work with each individual property owner and the neighborhood as a whole and um, try to look at all the issues uh, of the uh, drainage, water, sewer. And what prompted this was, you know, initially we didn't get a lot of contact from people, but recently more and more people have been contacting my office wanting to know 
when are those utilities going to be available, so we thought it was prudent to start the initial investigation uh, into it. But I mean, we may very well still be two years away from actually doing any any construction. But And, and with the ruts in the yard, uh, I can guarantee you we will get that uh, taken care of. T-Bird has never, um, if I've called them about something, never failed to fix something or correct it to make sure that each property owner is satisfied with the condition of their yard when we're done, and, and I'm sure Mr. Kelly this evening that I will make sure that gets taken care of for him because we don't, I don't, I think anybody knows, I don't believe, we even fix the yards. If our snow plow digs up a yard, comes around the corner, we go back in the spring, we mark them, and we fix them even with the snow plows, and so we will make sure that gets taken care of. And our, our goal would be when we're done that we would be able to do a project that would provide water and sewer opportunities for those folks that want it, solve the drainage issues that were that are brought to our attention, and at the end of the day, everybody would be happy with the final product. So, Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Any other comments? Anyone else in the audience wish to address the council? Mr. Heidi? Move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Yep. Opposed, same sign. Thank you. The meeting is adjourned.